Uh, thanks, Max, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Before I address the topic of sustainable cash growth, which is the theme of the conference, I'll just take a moment to recap on Yumba for those that are less familiar with our, our company. Yumba is a diversified shellfish aquaculture company. We're looking to build an investment grade portfolio that provides resilience and quality of earnings and manages risk across three key areas. The first thing that we do is that we want a diversification of species. So whilst Max pointed out we farm abalone and that's been, I guess, the base of the company, we're also heavily involved in oyster farming and mussel farming. The second thing that we do in terms of the portfolio is have a geographic spread. So we're located across southeast Australia with operations in Victoria, South Australia, Tasmania, and a recent investment up in New South Wales. The third area of diversification is where we play along the value chain. So as a business, we're selling to consumers, our abalone, oysters and mussels, but we also have a business to business offering in the oyster spat that we sell to producers in South Australia and Tasmania, underpinning approximately three quarters of the Coffin Bay oyster industry. So as an unlisted company, you may ask why we're we here. The reality is that whilst we're unlisted, we like to have the discipline of operating as a listed company. So for us today, it's the opportunity to present our business model and to be open to the challenges and test it against our peers. So I do look forward to your questions, but hopefully none too hard. The second reason for being here is that it gives us a chance to profile what we are doing. As an organisation, we are in a growth strategy and we have multiple options as to how we achieve that through organic development and acquisition. So whilst in the current market, we're not looking to list in the short term, we're always open to having discussions with investors. So if you hear something today that is of interest, then uh, come and see me afterwards. To look at the theme of the session today about sustainable cash generation. For aquaculture, as in all agriculture, it is the vital thing that we do get sustainable cash generation because of the capital intensity of the industry. Based on the FY22 annual reports of those agriculture companies that I could access, the average capital employed per dollar of revenue is $1.68. That capital is tied up in infrastructure, which often takes a long time to build, and biomass, which in our case can take up to three years to grow. So it's a long capital cycle, and to deliver a return of 15% on funds employed, it means that we must deliver a 25% EBITDA margin to revenue. That's in order to provide a return on the existing capital. And for a company like Yumba that is in a growth mode, we're actually investing ahead of that. And in order to fund the growth, it's even more vital that we focus on the cash generation. So our operational focus within the business is very much about driving cash growth in order to meet investor expectations and continue to attract capital for further growth. So how do we do this? We're fortunate that Yumba has a product that customers want, and we're able to produce it in an economically efficient way. The challenge for us is about balancing the demand and the supply side of our business and getting that balance right to generate the cash flow. So through the rest of this presentation, I'll talk through some of the macro ele elements that we see in the environment that impact this. Also about some of the fundamental demand elements within our business platform and how we use the supply side to manage risk and continue to grow. On the supply side, 8 billion people get a significant amount of protein from seafood. The world population continues to grow and arable land and wild catch is in decline. So aquaculture is producing an increasing proportion 
of the global food supply. Importantly, the closed loop nature of our agriculture system is we're able to actually replenish the resources and maintain that supply in a sustainable manner. As a business, we're also fortunate that we farm animals that have a low environmental impact. Abalone are largely herbivores, and hence the quality of the water that we discharge back into the system is very similar to what we pump ashore in the first place. We're equally fortunate that we have oysters and mussels in the portfolio that are both filter feeders. So for filter feeders, they're taking the nutrient that is already in the water and absorbing the nitrogen into the shell and the tissue as they grow. So effectively, by reducing the nitrogen load in the system, they're cleaning the water in which they are growing. As a business, these two elements mean that we have a demand side advantage in that we have a product that is needed as part of the food solution of the world. And the fact that it actually tastes great and is sustainable certainly makes it attractive. But it's one thing to be part of the solution for the production food mix. It's another thing to ensure that you're producing something that the customer wants. We recognise that as we seek to grow our cash flows from employed capital, that we need to address the needs of today's market, which is really around convenience and responsible production. On convenience, the next generation of our traditional Asian customers for abalone are less likely to want to go through the angst of having to shuck and clean it before they serve it, much preferring something that can be easily transferred from packet to stove to plate. Although I can assure you it's not that difficult to shuck, but everyone wants something that is convenient. In the food service sector, we see the general shortage of kitchen staff and the cost of employing them means that kitchens have to be much more efficient than what they used to be. All of this means that we are seeing an increased demand for easy or no preparation product. At Yumba, we work to listen to our customers and understand these needs. We do joint business planning and then translate that into how can we actually deliver an option to address the need rather than just producing the product. As we speak today, our new product development team are progressing a new Aquavit line of shucked, lightly cooked abalone that has a seven month shelf life. This product is suited for both retail and food service because it's convenient. But in addition to the product, customers also want to, and rightly have, a high expectation of us as producers. They want to know that we are doing the right thing. Yumba has always sought to engage in strong relationships in the regional communities in which we operate and we have an active ESG agenda. For us, we're particularly proud that the Aquaculture Stewardship Council recently awarded us the Above and Beyond Award. This recognises our commitment to community, to environment and to our staff in our farming processes. As a business, we are on a continuing journey in terms of our Indigenous engagement and we're always looking for ways to do things more efficiently, innovative, or adopt techniques which reduce our carbon footprint. But the demand side of the business is only viable if we get the supply side right in terms of our cash generation. As noted at the outset, Yumba is developing a strategy and building up an investment grade portfolio that has that geographic and species risk. You can see from the map on the chart that we're doing this through both development and acquisition and making sure that we do get the, the spread right between species and locations. But it's more than a theory. It actually works for us in practice. In the current year, when we're spawning abalone on Kangaroo Island, whether it's because the temperature wasn't right 
or the Barry Manilow song wasn't appropriate in the hatchery. We had trouble with the initial spawning, but we we're still able to ensure that we stop the farm at the right time to maximise the production yields because we could translocate stock from our Port Lincoln hatchery and nursery environment to Kangaroo Island. So it's portfolio theory in practice, not just in words. Importantly, this investment grade portfolio is what provides us with market access, giving us relevance and scale. We benefit from the fact that we are of sufficient scale in a highly fragmented sector of aquaculture, that we can supply customers like Costco in North America and GoDak and Interprest in Japan. We're confident that as a business, as they grow, we can grow with them and continue to supply a consistent product. Equally, we're able to drive economies of scope. We benefit from the reality that 80% of aquaculture is the same and 20% relies on the species. We see this in the propagation area of our nurseries and hatcheries, but we also see it when our team has a problem and the cross skills that they bring from that broad aquaculture experience to solve that problem comes to, to the front. Equally, economies of scope mean that we are not one dimensional to our customer base. We can supply multiple species in varied formats to meet their needs. We do this by managing a vertically integrated business model that gives us certainty and control over the supply chain as a means of delivering consistent product quality to our customers and driving that sustainable cash generation. By its very nature, Sustainable cash generation requires a focus on quality. And at Yamba, we pursue quality to be recognised as the supplier of choice for shellfish. We have a natural advantage in the environments where we farm, pumping in and working in the high quality and pure waters of the Southern Ocean. However, this advantage must be capitalised on by a systemic approach to quality across the production base and through the supply chain. It starts at the hatcheries and nurseries. The better the quality of the juveniles always results in a better quality of grain fish at harvest time. We have strict operating procedures about how we manage risk. We also ensure that we have the right biosecurity in place to protect our investment, but also the investment of our customers. Our quality processes extend beyond the farm gate and beyond the production factory through the supply chain. For a batch of oysters that we send from Tasmania up to Queensland, we want to know that the consumer is going to have a good experience and eat a safe product. So we put data loggers in there that will trigger if there is a fallout from the temperature parameters. This additional service gives us good feedback from the customer because it enables them to build stronger relationships with the end consumer, whilst at the same time building customer equity for Yumba. So sustainable cash growth means an equal focus on the demand and the supply sides of the business. We have a demand side strength in a product that meets a global need. Our shellfish are a sustainable source of protein. However, we need to continue to work on ensuring that it is product that people are want and are willing to pay for, using customer insights to develop the right product solutions. Equally, on the supply side, we can deliver product through the investment grade portfolio and we will need to continue to develop this. If we can get these levers right, then we can drive that challenging EBITDA margin to capital employed and address the capital intensity within the industry. So it's an exciting time to be leading Yumba, but the final judgment comes when you actually consume the product. Our oysters, our mussels and our abalone are sustainably produced. They're crafted by a passionate team across Australia 
who are committed to providing a great food experience for you, as equally as we as a business are committed to delivering sustainable cash growth for our investors today and in the future. Thank you. I might start off. Uh, you got a, a there's a listed peer on the ASX Rare Foods. They have a different farming model to yours. They see ranch versus you farm on land. I guess what are the advantages or disadvantages of your farming model versus theirs? Uh, so it's a good question. Um, so Rare Foods Australia, uh, their business model is that they take um, hatch juvenile stock and, and take that out to sea. We're really competing in a slightly different space. Um, their total production, I believe, is about 80 tonnes a year. We're producing roughly 800 tonnes of product a year. Um, they grow their fish larger, so they're trying to capture more of the value of the wild catch market as opposed to the farmed abalone market. The key thing for us, though, is that we are farming in a controlled environment, so we're not subject to obviously the vagaries and some of the predatory nature that you were dealing with um, in a marine environment. So, you know, for us, different business models, different strengths and value propositions. Any questions? Uh, thanks for the presentation. This is an area that I'm not an expert in. I, more of a, a question um, in, this isn't a consumer, um, kind of their 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 view, and if you go wild catch versus farmed, the consumer has a reaction where it's wild and I don't want farmed. And versus sustainability or sustainable, um, then then you have the consumer um, kind of embraces around it. The question inside that is, how do you is is that farmed based a barrier to creating demand, and how do you switch that to making it more synonymous with sustainably produced versus farm versus wild? Yeah, look, it, it, again, it, it's a good question because uh, firstly, from my perspective, when I look at Australia, I say we have such a wonderful natural advantage in seafood production. So we shouldn't be trying to compete necessarily with wild sector versus farmed. It's about enunciating effectively what the value proposition is to the consumer group that you're trying to talk to. Without doubt, you know, if I talk about abalone, um, you know, the wild stocks have, have been reduced. The wild sector at the moment is doing a fantastic job trying to you know, restore and maintain those stocks and, and keep, a, um, keep an industry alive. So for us, producing a farm product, it really is a complement to, to what they're doing. And, you know, even in, into the future, you know, being able to work and take farm product back into the wild and restore some of those stocks is, is something that Younger would be keen to do. Obviously, there's very tight biosecurity and biodiversity uh, considerations in that. But we don't need to compete. Industry, um, I think, Generally, with some of the certification organisations such as MSC and ASC, also help in communicating that. So, you know, getting the right endorsement for the product and, and pitching it effectively to the consumer. Right. Just one. Yes. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, you talk about a fragmented market. What, what are the barriers to entry? In this space? Uh, the main one's probably the opening slide, the capital intensity. Uh, but look, the reality is that, you know, the, there are a number of barriers to entry. But one of the key ones is actually finding the right location to establish an agriculture space, whether it's in the marine environment or whether it's land based. So, you know, again, uh, from my viewpoint, more work needs to be done in terms of supporting the industry through spatial planning and, and use of land and marine assets to help ensure that we have a future um, growth options in the industry. Once you've found the space, then yes, it is highly capital intensive to, to establish with a long capital cycle, as I mentioned. I think the other 
the other element to it is, um, you know, in reality, the challenge today, which I think most sectors face, attracting the talent to actually get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, David. Well done.